Good afternoon, friends. This is Brother Eddie. I've been sitting here pondering a few things, and I wanted to share with you, share my heart with you today, because there's a lot that's going on in the world right now, and I've I've prayed about this, and I know that I've watched a lot of uh, I watch a lot of Facebook, and get on there a lot, looking around and just seeing what people say. And I notice a lot of times when you see a video, you'll click on it and you'll watch it, but you won't necessarily read what's wrote or what's written down, but you'll watch a video. But neighbor, let me tell you something today. Now, I want to share this with you. I want to share my heart with you. I've, I've been silent for long enough. The devil's had my mouth shut long enough. We are living in perilous times. You can bank on what I'm getting ready to tell you this evening if this is from God because I wouldn't be on here doing this. We are living in a time right now that if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I'd be making preparations. If I were you and in your situation, I would be finding me a place to get right with God. Amen. But let me read something to you here that's really been on my heart. Now, it's a very, very familiar passage of Scripture that a lot of people read when it comes to the end of time and the last days. And But I want to touch on something. I don't see how in the world anybody in their right mind can say that they don't believe in God or they don't believe that the Bible is accurate when what I'm getting ready to share with you compared to what's going on in the world. Just listen here. Matthew chapter number 24. We all know the story. We all know the parable. All you church people and heard preachers get up and hack and preach on this all their life. But I just want you to take notice of this one thing. Matthew chapter number 24. Um, Jesus was talking to his disciples there on the Mount of Olives. In verse 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now get this. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, we know all this is going on. It's been going on for some time now. We know that since uh, Acts chapter 2, according to what Joel prophesied in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, that it'll come to pass in the last days that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. And all my servants and handmaidens in those days will I pour out of my spirit. We know that. We come to that was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2 when Peter told them, he said, this is that. These men ain't drunk like you suppose they are, seeing this but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel that it'll come to pass in the last days that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now, in the last days, he said, last days began in Acts chapter two, same, same uh, chapter, the same book of the Bible that the church was birthed in, the book of Acts. So we read that and we know that the last days started then. Well, some 2,000 years or however many years uh, before that was the birth of Christ. But we know now that, these, that Jesus had just told these guys uh, just prior to this, you know, sometime in, in Matthew chapter 24, he told them for nation rise against nation, kingdom against kingdoms. There'll be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. I encourage you to get on the internet, and I know people are watching this are probably thinking, well, you know, internet's the, the, uh, that's the information highway. Get on there and look up how many earthquakes have took place up until the past, I'm going to say 100 years, 115, back around 1900. You take the earthquakes that have happened just in the last 20 to 30 years compared to the, the time up to that. It's phenomenal. It'll blow your mind. That's just one proof. But right here is what I want to touch on. You hear of ISIS, and I know everybody turns a new on, knows who ISIS is, and all this idiots that we've got in Washington that seems to be supporting this bunch of nuts. But listen here in verse chapter 24 of Matthew, verse 9. Take this and dig it out for yourself. Now here, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And that's Jesus talking. He said, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And I just want to touch on this. How many people do you see now on the news 
recording these horrific videos of these ISIS idiots over there taking Christians and killing them, beheading them. The Bible even talks about that concerning the Antichrist and the move of in the last days. Uh, people that stand for the testimony of Jesus Christ are being beheaded. It's not a coincidence that all this stuff was written in the Bible some 2,000 years ago, and some maybe may be a little bit longer, some may be less. But all of it's written, and now we're seeing it come to pass. Could this be a coincidence? No, I don't think so. For those of you that don't believe the Bible, I'm getting ready to just tell you, you're wrong. That's just a plain word. But we read that in Matthew. Now, in, in cha Psalms chapter 9, verse 17, it pins these words. The writer said it like this, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Now, what's that tell you? Now, that don't mean that they're going to die and go to hell. No, it does, but it don't only mean that. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. What do you think that's saying? It's telling me one thing, that if your heart's not right with God, and you're living a lifestyle of saying it's okay to go to church looking like this and acting like that, and you can't tell the difference between you and the world, and now they're ordaining homosexuals and, and all this ungodly filth that's being taken place and today is being accepted by modern Christianity, that is nothing, that's absolutely nothing but abomination in the sight of God. The wicked shall be turned into hell in all the nations that forget God. Now let me let me read you something else. And I'll try to hurry on this because, you know, like I said, I feel this is for somebody. If not, there's a lot of Christian people. And this is one I really want to speak to. Those of you that don't know Jesus, I don't expect you to know this stuff unless you was taught that way and raised that way and at some point have quit on God. Then you need to be back to the starting point where you used to be. But now you people that go to church and claim to be Christians and are there every time the doors are open, you need to heed to this stuff. You need to know the scripture and you need to know the Bible and what we're saying. The Bible is being fulfilled right before our very eyes at any moment. Jesus could return. And I'm telling you right now, the Bible says he came once to offer himself for the sins of many, but to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. What I'm saying today is how many people are looking for him? Don't answer that. Just think for yourself. Second Chronicles chapter number seven, verse number 14. It's very familiar, very popular scripture. The Lord God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He'll do three things. He said, then, while I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Hmm, their land. The, the, the place they live, the place they're from, their land. So apparently somewhere here, he's trying to tell us that he knows in these last days, their land is gonna be needing healed. But the only thing that needs healed is what? Something that is sick. And I'm going to tell you, the United States of America is sick today. It's sick with a disease called sin. It's sick with a, with a, a nine, Psalm 917 mentality where people that say they are, but they ain't. They have got away from God. They, they, have, they have laid down the cross. They have, they have left their first love, and he's called us right now back to our first love. And, and what he's saying is if we'll humble ourselves, we'll pray, we'll seek his face, and we'll, we'll turn from our wicked ways, then he'll hear from heaven, he'll forgive our sins, and he'll heal our land. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, friend, but America's land needs healed today. There's a healing that needs to take place, and I'm not talking about a physical body. I'm talking about the land of this great country that we live in. If you don't watch and you're not careful, everything that we've stood for, everything that we've believed in, and everything that this nation once was is getting ready to be took from us. Why? It's not ISIS's fault. It's not President Obama's fault, as much as I can't stand him. It's not his fault. You know whose fault it is? It's yours and my fault. Christian people now, mind you. Because if we'll, hum oh, hallelujah to God. If we'll humble ourselves and we'll pray and we'll seek his face and we'll turn from our wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven. Then he'll forgive our sin. And then he will heal this great country that we live in. But it's going to take some work from you and me as Christians. That's what it's going to take. Jeremiah, get this. And I'm, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Uh, I want to read something here out of Jeremiah. And I'll hurry and get out of the way. But Jeremiah chapter 6 and this is another popular scripture that's, that's it's something that everybody knows. When I start reading it, you'll automatically know what it is. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, 17. It says, Thus saith the Lord, 
Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. There is the answer to the problem. Stand in the ways and see. Have a vision, spiritual vision. The Bible says where there's no vision, uh, you people perish. And the word vision there in the scripture is de defined as divine revelation. And uh, if you don't have a divine revelation or you don't have that spiritual vision, your people is going to perish. And this country's perishing. This is going out to somebody. And I hope to God it gets a million likes. Not for me, but I'm telling you right now, we're, we're being called. This is a call to battle. This is a call for God's people to come back to the starting block. We need a revolution. And what I mean by revolution, I mean going from here right back to where we started at a, a complete turn. A complete back to what it used to be. We need to get back to the Bible. I ain't worried about your TV ministry. I ain't worried about how much money you got. I ain't worried about how pretty your suit is or what kind of church you go to, how many people attend your place on Easter or every week. I'm concerned is how is it with your soul? That's the only thing that's going to matter. I tell people all the time, it ain't going to matter 10,000 years from now how big your church was. It ain't going to matter 10,000 years from now how much money you took in or how much uh, vehicle you drove or how much it cost. Or nice yeah, that, that stuff don't matter. What's going to matter 10,000 years from now is what did you do with this man Jesus? Something to think about. But listen, Jeremiah 6 and, and 16. Stand ye in the ways of sin, ask for the old past, where is the good way, and walk therein, and you'll find rest for your souls. What's the very next, last ver, uh, the very last uh, sentence in that chat, at verse say? But they said... We will not walk therein. If that's not America today, then my name ain't Eddie Thompson. Verse 17, he says, and, and, and for you preachers that feel like you're preaching to the wall, preaching to the air, and nobody's hearing what you're saying. No, nothing, it's just bouncing off of everything. The same thing happened here. He said, also, I said over you, watchmen, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. I couldn't tell you now how many times I've been in pulpits to preach and, and people look at you like a deer in the headlight and they give you that look because they don't want to hear what you're saying. They don't want to hear the truth. They want you to tell them what, what they want to hear. What we're seeing today is a generation of people who don't know God. A generation of people that have no idea what the anointing of the Holy Ghost is because they're so used to religion and ritual. But I'm telling you right now, I believe God is calling his old school saints back together. And when I say old school saints, I'm, take, I'm talking about people like myself and people that have stood to walk for years and have not, not, they've not, not let down the gauntlet. We're here to do one thing, and that's to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, friend, it's time. It's high time that you and me rise from out of our sleep and we get back to the anointing. We get back to the Bible and, and forget all this modern day hogwash that's going around. We got to get back to the word of God and we got to get back to preaching the truth to people because that's the only thing that's going to save this place. And we got to live it. We got to live this thing, neighbor. I love you, and it's my heart's desire to see as many people come to know the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ, come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and be added to the kingdom daily. But we can't do it sitting on our spiritual rear ends, church. It, it's, it's been long enough. It's easy to go to church and throw your hands up in the air and worship and praise, but when you get out of that church, when you're at school, when you're at the workplace, when you're in Walmart, you're on the streets, where is he at then? See, that's when the rubber meets the road. But I want to just—I just wanted to share my heart with you today, and I ain't doing this to look big or act like, oh, he's something big. Ain't got nothing to do with Eddie, because I wouldn't do this. But I'm telling you right now, friend, we got to get back to the Bible if we're ever going to see a move of God in our region, in our in our home, in our uh, community, in our cities, our county, our state, our region, or our country. It's going to be when Christians. Come together in one mind and one accord. What did the Bible say in Acts chapter 2 happened? History says that in the, in the book of Acts, they was as high as 450 to 500 people tried to cram themselves into that upper room. But what happened? The Bible says that there was about 120 on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, Acts chapter 2 says, it says they were all with one mind or in one mind and with one accord. And then suddenly there come a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And you know the story. I'm not going to go in and recite the whole scripture. But it, the key thing in that whole issue right there was this. People is in one mind in one accord. It was through them by Jesus. And when God's people that are called by his name 
And when we humble ourselves, we pray, we seek his face, not his hands, not God, what can you do for me? But God seek his face. You just want to get up and do his lap and just get, when you get in somebody's face, that's who they are. When you seek his face, and here's the key, turn from your wicked ways. Well, bless God, I'm not wicked. Well, that's the very one that needs to hear this. It's not meaning you individually. It ain't about you and it ain't about me. It's all about Jesus. And turning from our wicked ways means turning from the ways of the flesh. If we humble ourselves, pray, seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, he will hear from heaven. He will forgive our ungodly lifestyles and sins in the church especially, and he will heal this once great nation. But it's going to take them things. It's going to take... God's people come together in one mind and one accord. If you're not willing to do that, then just go right ahead and sit back and let this nation be destroyed by its enemies. But I promise you God can turn this thing around. America, Facebook, YouTube, anybody that hears this, I want to encourage you in Jesus' name right now, get your heart right with God. Get in the name of Jesus, get in the word of God, and make it right with God, and sit back on your spiritual butts and do nothing. No, we don't say that. When we get our hearts right with God and we get real with him and we get off of our, our, our hindquarters, being nicely, and we stand up in the name of Jesus and we come against this stuff and then we start living holy once again, then we're going to see things change. I just, you know, I just wanted to share my heart with you and you have a blessed day in the name of Jesus.